During a surgical procedure, a patient's right sympathetic trunk was accidentally severed, just cranial to the level of spinal nerve T1. Which function would be left intact? Let's see the options. Erector pili muscle activity. Erector pili muscle is related to the hair follicle and it is supplied by postganglionic sympathetic fibers. So it will be affected and the option is wrong. The other option B, dilation constriction of blood vessels. Again, the blood vessels are supplied by sympathetic fibers that uh, cause uh, vasomotor activity, either dilation or constriction, like vasoconstriction in the blood vessels of the skin and vasodilatation of the blood vessels of the uh, heart, coronary blood vessels. Sweat production will also be affected because the sweat glands also receive sympathetic fibers, which are pseudomotor. So this option is also wrong. D, size of the pupil. The uh, sympathetic fibers will cause dilated pupil and um, because they are supplied by sympathetic fibers, but these sympathetic fibers, they ascend in the sympathetic trunk from the upper thoracic segments and they ascend into the cervical sympathetic trunk. So if the sympathetic trunk is affected, then this will uh, cause severance of the sympathetic fibers that are destined for the dilator pupillae muscle. And so this will result in meiosis. Uh, actually here, cutting the sympathetic trunk at the level of T1 will affect all the sympathetic fibers that are heading to the head and neck because there is no sympathetic outflow in the cervical segments of the spinal cord. There are no preganglionic sympathetic fibers arising from the cervical segments of the spinal cord and all the preganglionic sympathetic fibers, they have to ascend from the upper thoracic uh, segment. So this will cause depletion of the sympathetic fibers or impulses to the region of the head and neck and result in Horner's syndrome, which is characterized by ptosis, meiosis, um, flushing of the face and anhydrosis because of loss of pseudomotor activity. So uh, this option D is also wrong because the size of the pupil will be affected in this case. We are only left with voluntary muscle activity. Voluntary muscle activity will, of course, will not be affected because the voluntary muscles, they receive motor neurons and are not supplied by sympathetic fibers. So the voluntary muscle activity will be left intact if there is a cut in the sympathetic trunk.